mapumziko Niki mbili ye wapi Siyo ni pa kushika Gizali metanda Najua siku moja Yote ya tatoeka Yesu a tafuta machozi Ni Yesu amebaki Rafiki mwaminifu Kwa keni tajificha Daima chukua vyote kwangu ni atie Yesu tu siku ikifika ni lale Siyo ni papu mziko Dunia chungu kwangu Mauti mbele yangu Siku ikifika Najua siku moja Yote ya tatoeka Rafiki mwaminifu Kwa keni tajificha Daima chukua Vyote kwa mgu Ni atie Rafiki mwaminifu Kwa keni tajificha Daima chukua Vyote kwa mgu Ni atie
I saw in one of the advertisements publicizing our week of spiritual emphasis that our theme for this week is Waymaker. I like that theme. And when I was invited to speak without even thinking, I said I will take a few days and speak on the theme of Waymaker. Now, I'm bred and brought up as an Adventist. I usually love Nyimbo za Kikristo. Nyimbo za Kristo, yes. I also like uh, church hymnal and uh, Wende Nyasai. But sometimes I take time out and listen to other singers. And there's a song I love. I think a certain lady from Nigeria sang it. Waymaker. <laughs> Beautiful song. God being a way maker. And I'm thrilled to speak on that subject. My sermon this evening is from the book of Exodus. Exodus. The title Exodus is from a Greek word, Exodus. You know, in the Old Testament, the first writers wrote it in Hebrew. And if you go to the same book in Hebrew, it says, these are the names. But when the Greek translators were translating the book of Exodus or of yeah, of Exodus into Greek, they thought of a title. How will we entitle this word, this book? And they thought and thought and thought, and they picked the theme that was key in the book, the theme of the children of Israel getting out of Egypt. And so they titled the book, Exodus. Exodus in Greek simply means departure or exit. And if that alone is what is known about that book, it is huge. God making an exit of Israelites from the land of Egypt. That name went through the Latin Vulgate as Exodus and it has never changed from that time. So the book of Exodus talks about God releasing, removing, opening up a way for the slaves to come out of slavery. What a good book for us to read. And I chose the theme or the passage with the theme that discusses exit. This is in chapter 14 of Exodus. I want to Title my sermon. Fear not, be still, move on. You heard me? Fear not, be still, and do what? And move on. These are the words that Moses used to encourage the Israelites as they stood before the Red Sea. And behind them, the armies of Pharaoh. Besides them were hilly mountains. They had reached a dead end. And at that dead end, Moses pronounces these words to the children of Israel. Fear not. Be still. Move on. Now, let me spend some time sharing with you this thought that was expressed by Moses, fear not. It's a relevant message this evening. Because seated here and standing here are people who have fear. Fear is the denominator. You just describe which type of what? Which type of fear? Some amongst us here fear about their health. 
Some among us here fear about their future. Some among us here fear that they will be rejected. Different kinds of fear. Fear is what defines a human being. No wonder this word, fear not, fear not, is a phrase that appears again and again and again in the whole Bible. When God comes into the circumstances of men, that is usually the first word he utters to them. Fear not. Interestingly, when I was a young man in college, there was this friend of mine, well-built, like the ones who go to the gym here. I usually meet some of them and uh, I joke and tell them that, man, if you declared war against me, I will surrender the first instance. <laughs> Reason? Because of those muscles. So this friend of mine had huge biceps. But let not those huge biceps cheat you. This man wanted a certain girl but did not have the courage to approach this lady. So he sought assistance from frail people like us. Uh, how do I go about this? <laughs> Some men here, you can identify with that man. How do I go about this? Then we advised him. This is what you do, this is what you do. Wait around this place and do a few things like this. So the day came when he was to carry out the assignment. Man, he came back in the evening, he said I could not do it. it. It was just difficult for me to do. Yes, that's fear of some young men here. I was once also when I was in college, uh, there was a man in the room who had spotted a young lady and wanted to approach that young lady when he came back to us with the report, he said that when he uttered the words of love to that young lady, that lady wept. And we asked him, why, why did she weep? I don't know why she wept. Then later on, we understood that this man who was with us in the room was an elderly man in his 60s. And the lady he was trying to approach was in her 20s. So we understood why the lady wept. Because probably she asked herself, actually, what is wrong with me? <laughs> are, are these the type of people that I'm left with? I think that lady also went in front of a mirror and looked at herself. Some ladies can identify with that lady this evening. What has happened to me? I know some men in this meeting I've been diagnosed with some disease. Some may be terminal. They are here. And they fear what the future holds for them. So we all are under this bondage called fear. And I thank God for this passage when the children of Israel reached a dead end, when facts were facts and they were actual, when you fear it is not because of some imaginary thing, most of the time it is real. Your account reads zero. Why is somebody telling you not to fear? When you fear it is because of facts, there were facts. The mountains were around them, the sea was in front of them, the Pharaoh was rushing to take them back. There were facts, but in spite of those facts, a message is uttered by the servant of God, written in the scriptures for us. Fear not. Fear not. I tell you, this phrase does not come from the blues. It came from the experience Moses had had with God. God who had talked with him in that burning bush. God who had sent him to Egypt. God who had made many miracles before Pharaoh. 
God had told him his people will be free. And eventually, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, and ten plagues. In the tenth one, the children of Israel were released. So this fear does not come from nothing. It comes from the experience that Moses had with God. I remember the words of Ellen G. White. We dare not fear anything, lest we forget how God has been with us in the past. Fear not, because if you look at your experience, however little it may be, you will find the hand of God in your life. Refer to that experience. That's what made Moses face the sea. That's what made Moses stand firm. Because God had been with him. God had been with him. Yes, you read this story. It was not out of their own will. They had encamped where they had camped. If you read the narrative, God had expressly instructed them on how to move. There was a shortcut to Canaan. God told them not to go through that route. God had directed them where to be. And through the pillar of fire and of cloud, by day and by night, God was with them. Why would they fear? Why would they fear? The statement, fear not, is a statement built on how they have walked with God. My message to us this evening, when your road re reaches a dead end, when facts don't make sense, when things are falling apart, you're trying to hold your marriage together, it's not working. Let these words by Moses resound in your mind. Fear not. And it is because God is the one speaking them. Now, fear not. Be still. Move on. I want to move to the next phrase. Be still. What I see with this message, or this phrase, be still, it is when fear is transformed into confidence. It does not mean that the things that you are fearing have melted away. They are still there. But because of the confidence you have in the one who has said, fear not, you stand calm, peaceful, amidst danger. You stand firm, peaceful, amidst terror and things that are not good. Let me read this passage. I would like it to be projected in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 31, I would like to read a few verses to you. God talks about Assyria, in verse 8, he says, Assyria will fall with no human sword. Yes, a sword not mortals will deliver them. They will flee before the sword. And behold, young men will, put to for, to, will be put to forced labor. Their stronghold will fail will fall because of terror at the site of battle. I'm reading verse 9, standard. Their commanders will panic. 
declares the Lord, whose fire is in Zion, whose furnace is in Jerusalem. God is speaking about Assyria in this passage. The background is the children of Israel being surrounded by the Assyrians during the time of Ezekiah. Ezekiah has declared that he will not give in. Then God gives this message through prophet Isaiah that Assyrians will fall. This message built confidence in the children of Israel who were under siege in Jerusalem. And they, at the words of the prophet, through good leadership of Ezekiah, they remained calm in danger. I want to cite another example in the Old Testament when the soldiers who were the Assyrians again surrounded Elisha and Gehazi was terrified because of the multitude that were around them. Elisha prayed that God may open the eyes of Gehazi, that Gehazi may see that those who are around them are more than those who are coming to attack them. I call being still is facing danger with an eye, not on the danger, but with an eye on God. What does the church say? The problem may still be there, but to move your eyes from the problem and look at God, who is bigger than the problem that you may have. And that's how we can attain peace in our lives. Because the Bible says, we walk not by what? By sight, but we walk by what? By faith. Peace, calm, standing still is attained by having our sight. Not on the problem, but on God who can make us overcome. Why did Moses say these words? Because God had told him that they will move in that direction. And he was sure that God will make them go through the Red Sea. Yes, fear not. Yes, be still. And then finally, move on. Fear not, be still, and then do what? Move on. Where were they moving to? They were moving to step on the Red Sea. Is that a logical thing to do? Is God directing his people to drown? No. No. Because if you read further, it says that these Egyptians you are seeing today, they will be no more. If you read further, it says that God will fight for you. They were to move on because of trust in God. Moving on means having faith. If there is something that we need in our lives, is this thing called faith. Jesus cried, looking at the end of time, and said, will there be faith at that time? We are here, a people of faith. But it is a pity that Christ, looking at our time, asked questions about our faith. Faith is a substance of things not seen. Faith is evidence of those things that are hoped for. And that is a key element in the life of a Christian. Wonders happened when they stepped forth. It didn't matter whether the Red Sea was flooded or not. But when they stepped forth, the sea parted. And God made a way on or in the sea. Something that has not, had not been done before. 
something that was impossible, God made it happen. This is the God in whom we believe. God who is a way maker. What does the church say? Amen. I didn't hear you say amen. What does the church say? Amen. amen. Yes, God will make a way where there seems to be no what? No way. He wants you to experience him that way. I wonder why would God lead his people through a dangerous route like that? Why couldn't he make it easy for them? Why did he allow them to go to a dead end? I now know because he wanted them to experience him, experience his power in their lives. When they marched on that road through the Red Sea, it was to God's glory. And that's what God wants to do with your life. He wants to glorify himself in your life. Can you allow him? That is the question. That is the question. So step forth in faith. You may be struggling with something in life and you put it before God. My urge to you is step forth in faith. Most of you here have come to school just by faith. I'm urging you to go on in faith. Some of you are working here not because there are no better places outside here. Stay here and march on, move on. By what? By faith. Because when you do that, God will do wonders. He will open up ways where we have no way at all. It is my prayer this evening. This third week of spirit, third day of the week of spiritual emphasis. That with God's word through his servant Moses, we will have no fear in our lives when we look back into how he has led us. We will have confidence in him because it is him who is leading us. And will step forward in faith because he has said so. When God says, move on. When you listen to his voice, things will be all right. How many with me this evening would like to say, God help me experience you. And I reach my dead ends, whatever it may be. God help me to walk with you in the ways that you open in my life. How many would like to pray with me as we and shall we stand for a word of prayer? Loving Heavenly Father, we want to thank you because you spoke to us through your word this evening, reminding us that we need not fear, reminding us that we need just to be still, reminding us to move forward in faith. May we experience you anew in our lives this evening. We pray for our community here at Baraton. May you be with each and every one of us. Bless those who are here. Those who didn't make it this evening, wherever they are. Loving Lord, be with them too. Help us to be here again tomorrow to hear more of your word. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Does Jesus care when my heart is pained to deeply for me, for me, for me?